That's really encouraging, you know? Yeah. Listen to Bob Marley in church. Hey! <laughs> That's pretty cool, right? Um, I'd like to welcome everybody again here to Burlington Church of Christ this morning. Happy Mother's Day. Hey! Uh, welcome in, all the moms out there. I got two versions of this, just in case the laptop died, but I'm going to read it off the laptop so I can see it. Otherwise, I'm going to borrow my wife's glasses, I think. She's got to with me here a second as I zoom it to like 250%. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> so again, happy Mother's Day to all the mothers out there. Uh, this is, uh, you know, for some, a day that comes with uh, hopefulness and appreciation. I think both with the anticipated exit of winter, right? I mean, I'm like, what, three, yeah. two and a half weeks ago, three weeks ago, we had six inches of snow. I think, um, with the arrival of spring in Vermont, uh, we're getting to enjoy some glorious sunshine this weekend. And uh, my wife spent most of yesterday outside uh, planting and replanting or repotting. I mean, uh, Digging up rocks. <laughs> stuff like that, and moving rocks and things like that. I even helped with rocks. But, uh, you know, just uh, enjoying that sunshine and, and being able to just uh, be outside was a bonus. And I think that, you know, this is, it looks like summer starts tomorrow. So I guess we're done with spring, right? We're going to be in the 80s this week. So there you go. Really Happy good. spring. That was it. Yeah. Uh, well, I'll take it. Right. So, but this this day uh, in particular might be characterized also characterized as a day of desperation for some, right? Because I just came from the store a couple hours ago, and there are a lot of desperate looking men there. Uh, you know, young men, older men, um, aimlessly wandering the aisles and the card aisles and the flowers, just looking like they had no idea what they're doing. I was kind of one of them, but I, I had somewhat of a plan, so I was in better shape. We, f- we feel your pain. You can, uh, but you know. Uh, today is just, you know, we want to express gratitude for the, for the moms in our lives. And, uh, you know, I think the bottom line, uh, just a, a friendly reminder for the guys as I try to find my cursor here, is uh, remember to call mom tonight. Right? And don't forget that. But I also wanted to acknowledge, as the kids are moving out here, I also want to acknowledge that Mother's Day is not always necessarily a happy day for everyone, right? I mean, some people have lost their moms. Um, some have experienced abuse or abandonment due to where their mom was at in life during those younger years. Um, you know, maybe some never really had a meaningful relationship with their mom, despite just longing for it. Some moms are on their own without spousal support. So there's a lot of variations here, and we do want to acknowledge that it's not always easy. That Mother's Day is doesn't necessarily always represent, you know, a happy day. Um, but we do want to, uh, while we acknowledge that, and we do hope that, you know, you can find comfort and care and the love that God has and you're not alone, we see you. But appreciation is the word of the day today. So I pulled a few stats from Mother's Day that I found interesting. All right, so Americans plan to spend $31.7 billion with B today, Mother's Day 2022. So a lot of money being spent today by desperate people. <laughs> um, there's an average of 152 million Mother's Day cards sent every year. It's good, right? Uh, Americans will spend $2.9 billion on flowers wow. today. Um, it's a good day to be in the flower business. Mm-hmm. Mother's Day is celebrated in more than 100 countries, and 122 million phone calls are being made today, which is interesting because that's less than the number of cards sent. I don't know if there's some correlation there to, you know, but interesting. All right. Um, but call them off. <laughs> uh, and actually, it registers more traffic than any other day of the year, any other holiday. Mother's Day is the most call traffic, according to like Verizon and AT&T. They're like, yep, we're toast today, all hands on deck. Um, but what do, what do moms really want from this day of recognition? Uh, it's possibly a hard question to answer um, for a simple guy referencing the internet trying to come up with a sermon on Sunday. <laughs> uh, but happily for you, it did also occur to me to talk to my wife about this. Oh, uh, so you get that. What was her answer? Acknowledgement and appreciation. Mm-hmm. All right. yep. So here's a short list with only a tiny fraction of the things that moms do and experience. And it's not exhaustive, so just uh, bear with me as I'm working on it here. Whoops. First and foremost, kid responsibilities as a mom. Right? That's how you ended up getting there, right? Um, you carried a child for nine months, then you gave birth. That wasn't hard enough for the carrying part. You don't sleep for the first year, or maybe even more. Yeah. With infants. Yeah. Yeah, so, so I'm going through that now. Um, there are no concessions given by infants uh, when it 
when or where, where it may be most convenient to nurse. <laughs> you don't get to choose. Uh, dirty diapers, terrible twos, doctor's visits, page two. Boo-boos and band-aids, and then as they get older, helping navigate them, helping them na navigate growing up, going through teenage years, developing character, homework that's probably as painful for you as it is for them, <laughs> uh, endless car trips, back and forth from activities, being their safe space, being their biggest fan, ceaseless concern for their future, but most importantly, that mama bear protective mode that never turns off. And then the second thing I was thinking is just as incredible. Moms do all the little things that keep the house running smoothly. So meal planning and cooking, mountains of laundry, scrubbing toilets and tubs, vacuuming and grocery shopping. I'm somewhat making these up, but I'm assuming that many of you experience this, right? Um, I saw it with my mom. Uh, and then a third area, lest we not forget, she's the professional scheduler in the household. Um, tends to be better at it, maybe. The holder of all family details. Um, she remembers things that we yeah. forget. Uh, mom is a relationship builder and a mender. Uh, a va the vacation planner. The birthday planner. The gift buyer. Um, she may even buy her own gifts. <laughs> for her own birthday. <laughs> I have no experience with that. <laughs> uh, some realities here, right? Uh, designated photographer. There's a funny uh, video that she uh, and I found. That was off of an old 90s rock band song called Photograph. And they, they spoofed it, and it's like, Mommy's not in the photograph because she's always the one taking the photos. So all of the vacation photos are of the rest of the family and, and scenic vistas, but Mom's nowhere to be found. And the song talks about it. I'm like, Oh no, you're right. Yeah, you like to remember your vacation. Free photos. selfie stick, right? Yeah, exactly. exactly. I got a couple of photos of Shauna happily on this last vacation, but the only one thinking ahead. Like the, the bottomless purse, it's all there. Anything you need, <laughs> it's all planned for, it's all taken care of. All this and more done willingly. Why do they do it? You know, certainly there are times of joy, and even sometimes they get to you know be in the bathroom in peace for a couple of minutes. Uh, but what drives them to push through the drudgery and the cyclical nature of the not so joyous times? Um, you know, as soon as the, some examples maybe from our own house, right? As soon as the house is clean, a bomb goes off. <laughs> All right, when the piles of clean laundry are finally folded, an extra large pile falls out of the teenager's closet. Yeah. <laughs> it's not accounted for previously. Yeah. Um, you know, uh, as soon as the house is clean, the husband tracks in with his muddy boots. No. Again, no experience. No. <laughs> I'm talking about others. Other people did that. Um, I think that moms do this because God has bestowed on them a part of his strength that only they could handle. Empathy in a shepherd's heart combined with a willingness to die to self for the benefit of others. And so we celebrate this today for all our moms. And today, I, you know, we want to acknowledge all the times that we don't acknowledge how hard it is to be a mom. How much you put up with, how much you do for us. And most of all, just to express our gratitude for being the moms in our lives. So I'd like to, um, I'd like to just have the moms stand up here for a second. Sorry, to, you know, I know you weren't expecting that, but in this round of applause, um, to demonstrate that those are the same characteristics 
uh, and show of love that God has for us. And I think it's often through scriptures, it uses you know, beautiful prose, relatable imagery, just to help us envision that. Uh, even if it was written to, and is, written to a people 2,000 years ago or more, right, uh, in a way that they may best understand. Uh, I feel like we can still clearly see it today. And I love passages like these, because even if I don't understand all the caveats or the full history or the context, I feel like God's love still shines through. And we can see that as we read through the scriptures. I want to just read a few here, and you can swing with me over into these scriptures. Um, it's a scattering, so we're shotgun blasting through the Bible here. A couple different places that we'll look at. But Isaiah 66. Turn to Isaiah 66. And starting in verse 10. But this is you know, written to a people returning from captivity and hardship with a promise of better times for their nation and God's desire for provision. And starting in verse 10, it says, Rejoice with Jerusalem and be glad for her, all you who love her. Rejoice greatly with her, all you who mourn over her. For you will nurse and be satisfied at her comforting breasts. You will drink deeply and delight in her overflowing abundance. For this is what the Lord says, I will extend peace to her like a river and the wealth of the nations like a flooding stream. You will nurse and be carried on her arm and dangle on her knees. As a mother comforts her child, so I will comfort you and you will be comforted over Jerusalem. I had to look up what the word dandle meant, but um, I remember this, uh, you know. Uh, but as a mother comforts her child, what soothes an infant, an infant more than his or her mother? Carried on the hip, nursed at the breast, and bounced on the knees. Which that's the dandle part, to comfort and connect. I remember the first time uh, Adara laughed doing that. Like, that's a clear memory that I have. The first time, you know, like, I don't even know what kind of, you know, I don't know. I don't I have no idea what the age was. You know, a couple months, maybe a month. The first time you hear your kid laugh, like a, an actual laugh, I remember that, and I think it was kind of the bouncy, bouncy, bouncy. You know, those type of things. Can you see that image? You know, can you think of God in this way for you? Let's turn over to Hosea eleven. For Hosea in, uh, chapter 11, and this was written to people struggling to remember God's faithfulness to them, and had a history of going outside the pastures that God loving, lovingly created for them, but yet somehow the grass always seemed greener on the outside of the fence, mm -hmm. right? Now, in, starting in verse 3, it says, It was I who taught Ephraim to walk, taking them by the arms. They did not realize it was I who healed them. I led them with cords of human kindness, with ties of love. To them, I was like one who lifts a little child to the cheek, and I bent down to feed them. I'm willing to bend down and pick us up in order to show care. How many moms' backs just ached during those early years, right? Yeah. <laughs> Especially if the kids got heavier. Mm -hmm. um, but as a mother gently guides and heals, soothes, feeds, and loves her child, can you see this image for God? With us, and can you think of this? Can you think of God in this way for you? Let's turn over to Psalm 18. In Psalm 18. This is recounting God's intense love and protection for us. That's a paraphrase. Starting in. Uh, Psalm 18, verse 6. In my distress, I called to the Lord. I cried to my God for help. From his temple, he heard my voice. My cry came before him into his ears. The earth trembled and quaked, and the foundations of the mountains shook. <clears throat> they trembled because he was angry. Smoke rose from his nostrils. Consuming fire came from his mouth. Burning coals blazed out of it. He parted the heavens and came down. Dark clouds were under his feet. He mounted the cherubim and flew. He soared on the wings of the wind. He made darkness as covering his canopy around him, the dark rain clouds of the sky. Out of the brightness of his presence, clouds advanced with hailstones and bolts of lightning. The Lord thundered from heaven. The voice of the Most High resounded. He shot arrows and scattered my enemy. With great bolts of lightning, he routed them. 
The valleys of the sea were exposed and the foundations of the earth lay bare at your rebuke, Lord, at the blast of breath from your nostrils. He reached down from on high and took hold of me. He drew me out of deep waters. He rescued me from my powerful enemy, from my foes who were too strong for me. They confronted me in the day of my disaster. But the Lord was my support. He brought me out into a spacious place. He rescued me because he delighted in me. So this is, for me, this is the mama bear analogy right here. And you don't want to be on the wrong side of the equation on this one, I think. Right? Just that, <laughs> that, that picture, prompted to immediate action by David's prayers and motivated by delight in, in you. You know, don't come, don't come between the mama bear and the cubs, right, as they say. Can you see this image of God thundering out of heaven for you to protect his kid? Can you think of God in this way for you? So, in all this uh, being said, as we pause to take communion this morning, I hope we can really contemplate um, these images of who God is. He's a comforter, a healer, a defender, and a shepherd guiding us to good pasture. Uh, God, in his knowledge of our needs, saw fit to send Jesus as an exact representation of his being, but in human form, mm -hmm. to help us better understand his desire for us to be under his care. And uh, he, wants, he wants to take care of us. It's pretty cool. That's that mom instinct that has been bestowed on moms since the beginning of time. It comes right from God. We see Jesus as the ultimate shepherd, showing us who God is by his words and example, and ultimately his sacrifice on the cross. I want to just uh, close out that thought here for communion by reading, scrolling down, 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 okay. <laughs> reading Hebrews 2. You can turn there if you like. starting in verse 14. It says, Since the children have flesh and blood, he too shared in their humanity so that by his death he might break the power of him who holds the power of death, that is the devil, and free those who all their lives were held in slavery by their fear of death. For surely it is not the angels he helps, but Abraham's descendants. For this reason he had to be made like them, fully human in every way, in order that he might become a merciful and faithful high priest in the service to God, and that he might make atonement for the sins of the people. Because he himself suffered when he was tempted, he is able to help those who are being tempted. So as we just take the, uh, the bread and the juice this morning, I just, I, you know, I'm, I'm hoping that we can con combine these uh, couple of thoughts and concepts. Oh yeah. Chandra found a poem this morning um, that I would like to also read. And because moms are good at knowing what moms, other moms need. <laughs> yes. Are you the one that was like very long? I'm trying to find a pair of those, right? Um, who is this written by? It is Allison Woodard. Uh, a poem. To be a mother is to suffer, to tra uh, travail in the dark, stretched and torn, exposed in half-naked humiliations, subjected to indignities for the sake of a new life. To be a mother is to say, this is my body, broken for you. And in the next instant, in response to the created pri created's primal hunger, this is my body, take me. To be a mother is to self-empty, to neither slumber nor sleep, so attuned you are to the cries in the night. Offering the comfort of yourself and assurances of, I'm here. To be a mother is to weep over the fighting and the exclusions and wounds your children inflict on one another, to long for reconciliation and brotherly love, and when all is said and done, to gather all parties, the offender and the offended, into the folds of your embrace and to whisper in the ears that they are beloved. To be a mother is to be vulnerable, to be misunderstood, rallied against, blamed for the heartaches of the bewildered children who don't know where else to cast the angst they feel over their own existence in this perplexing universe. To be a mother is to hoist onto your hips those on whom your image is imprinted, bearing the burden of their weight, rejoicing in their returned affection, delighting in their wonder, 
bleeding in the presence of their pain. To be a mother is to be accused of sentimentality one moment and injustice the next. To be the receiver of endless demands, absorber of perpetual complaints, reckoner of bottomless needs. To be a mother is to be an artist, a keeper of memories past, weaver of stories untold, visionary of lives looming ahead. To be a mother is to be the first voice listened to and the first disregarded, to be a mender of broken creations and a comforter of distraught children whose hands wrought them. To be a mother is to be a touchstone and the source, bestower of names, influences, influencer of identities, life giver, life shaper, empath, healer, and original love. So with that, let's go to God in prayer. Father, we, uh, we thank you for who you are, um, that we can come to you knowing uh, full well uh, by just the example of Jesus, that you are empathetic, you are our comforter, our healer. You desire for us uh, to just feed in your green pastures. Uh, God, you, you look to take care of us, to provide for us, all the things moms do. Uh, Father, we thank you for these tangible examples and, uh, and just being able to find these areas that we can just relate to you who are just unfathomable. Uh, we're grateful for just Jesus' example, and mostly, God, we're grateful for his sacrifice, uh, deciding to go to the cross as an ultimate uh, showing of what extent he would go to for us um, and uh, as as your kids and Jesus as uh, our brother, God, that we can just uh, bask in knowing how much you care and love us. God, we thank you for today, and I uh, pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.